We're going to be going over a bird deal on a four-unit apartment building. Will this make you money, or is this a dud? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Welcome to the show, the show where I work with you, right? I work with you guys. I work with people like George, an investor from Long Beach, California, right? George, you're trying to build a rental portfolio. You want my take on this quad. You saw a quad, and you're like, yo, we got to look at this. And I think I know why, because the price is 129 Gs, dog. And every other quad out there is like 200 Gs. So you're like, what's the word? Let's check it out. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for you, George, right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's pull it up, right? This quad, okay? This is priced super low, right? Because it's going to be a bird deal, okay? The address, 4024 East 26, Newburgh Heights, 44105. 129900 which is stupid, stupid low for a quad in the Cleveland market. But it's been for sale forever, dude. It's been for sale for 132 days, right? So what is going on? Is this something where it's just in a really bad neighborhood and it's terrible and it's way overpriced and even though normal quads in like your C-grade area sell for 200 k but this is just in like an F-class neighborhood? Is it that? No. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty solid C-grade neighborhood, dude. Newburgh Heights is pretty nice, right? And as far as the property goes, is it just like so screwed up that it's like uninhabitable? Nope. It actually looks pretty darn nice. Okay, let's get to the interior. That's where I'm trying to go right now. We'll talk about that exterior in a little bit. But look at the interior here, right? Pretty decent uh, looking stuff, right? Nothing amazing, but nothing nothing uh, out of the ordinary, right? We actually already have three tenants in there, right? Home Depot loves quality cabinetry, right? We got tenants in there, okay? Current rents are four and a quarter, five ninety-five, five ninety, and the owner actually lives there, okay? Now, as far as market rents go, we're looking at six fifty, six fifty, seven fifty, seven fifty, right? Two of them are one beds, two are two beds, right? So twenty eight hundred, thirty-three thousand six hundred dollars, okay? Normally for that kind of rent in a C grade neighborhood in a property that's pretty decent, you're spending about two hundred thousand dollars, right? So everything is like, what the heck's going on? Why isn't this selling? It's $70,000 less. It's been on the market for like almost six months. What's the catch? Because you know there's a catch, right? If there wasn't a catch, it wouldn't be wouldn't be on the market this long. But the catch is not that the building is in horrible condition. It's not. It's in pretty good condition. Yes, the tenants are paying a little bit less than market rent, but that's not the end of the world, right? You just slowly work them up, right? We talk about that in a lot of the shows, right? So what is the problem it's the city now i already said it's a c-grade neighborhood though it's a pretty pretty nice neighborhood i like rentals in newburgh heights you know they perform pretty well okay it's nice but the city has got a pos that's point of sale and if you've never heard of the point of sale lots of cities in the cleveland market have those i got a link to a video all about the pos in the show notes below check that out right but Newburgh Heights' POS is, like, exceptionally nitpicky, right? Newburgh Heights is, like, this little tiny little village. There's only, like, 880 residents, right? And uh, the mayor uh, has actually uh, been involved in corruption scandals, right? Like, he got in trouble for campaign finance reform. Like, Steve, make sure you throw that on the screen here because I don't really like that guy. He's a doucher. So anytime we get the opportunity to talk shit about him on the, on the show here, we will. Because I'm assuming he's on his way out, okay? But as of right now, the building department is, is ran by him. Uh, and, you know, they're kind of making their own rules over there. It's, it's pretty wild how, how uh, nitpicky and crazy they could be, right? So with the POS, 
this is a double-edged sword. And you have to understand this going into it if you do a deal here. Uh, you're going to get solid tenants, solid performance, right? And in this particular case, the POS is so problematic, it's allowing you as an investor to come in and pick this up at a great discount. It will work out great for a burr. But you got to remember, that's a double-edged sword, okay? At one point, you will be on the other end of this, and you will be the seller. As I said, it's my opinion that that mayor is on his way out, okay? There's even been talks about annexing Newburgh Heights into Cleveland, right? There's another little village called Lindale. Uh, believe it or not, that little mayor, she got in trouble too, all right? She's been in trouble. Steve, put that on the screen as well. These little podunk fucking villages just trying to make their own rules, and everybody's just like, yo, what in the fuck are you guys doing? Like, Lindale's got, I think, like 100 houses in it. Uh, Newburgh Heights has like 880. Shockingly, Holton Wise is like, Twice the size of both these cities put together. But a lot of people in and around the Cleveland area have been calling for these these crummy little villages uh, that are too small to support their own like government uh, on a tax revenue basis to be annexed into Cleveland. Because what they actually do is they get on the highways when the highway uh, goes over their tiny little areas and they do speed traps. And uh, that's very famous. There's been a lot of articles about that and it drives everyone else nuts. So there's a lot of calls uh, I think we've even had like congressmen make calls to get rid of these two and make them part of Cleveland. So I think that's eventually coming. Steve, also give me the stuff about the uh, the annexing, right, and the Congress and all that jazz. Google it and find me them articles and plop them bad boys on the screen for these folk. And let's put a link in the show notes below so I can read that, right? So I want you guys to go into this with eyes wide open. So all that's going on, right, and that's – Drastically reducing your price, and that's why you get a crazy POS, right? With this particular deal, uh, the sellers provided me with the POS and the inspection report. They had another buyer back out previously, so the seller doesn't want to let anybody come in and do inspections. That's fine. Uh, I actually know the inspector that did the inspection. I ran through the inspection. Everything looks good. It all checks out. But the POS, which is literally like 80 freaking pages, I'll give that to you. That's what creates the big issues, Okay. Now, what we have, even though the house is in pretty solid condition, we got a few things with the POS and the city's just being nitpicky. Now, this is a 100-year-old building, okay? This building is 100 years old, right? And typically, when you have a 100-year-old building, right, and it was installed in one way, a lot of things get grandfathered in. This is where these crazy little villages that kind of make their own rules as they go, uh, you know, it gets a little wild, and they trample on people's rights. And, like, usually, you know, if you want, you could push back and sue them. They typically don't have that much money to even defend because the speed trap is, like, the only way they can remain solvent. But assuming you don't want to go through that process, and why would you? Because you're not the seller. So the particular seller is the one dealing with it. But what we got here is this gravel driveway. It's been a gravel driveway for 100 years. Never been a problem. But now the city's decided, nah, it's not good enough anymore, bro. Now you got to put in a concrete driveway. So you got to spend that coin, okay? Another thing they want you to do is, like, rebuild the back front porch, okay? Uh, they're saying there's some structural issues. You need to clarify that's good. So you got the driveway. You got the back porch. And in this crazy long inspection report, this is not something I disagree with, uh, but they didn't actually cite it. They said that uh, it may be asbestos uh, siding. Let me see if there's a good picture of the siding for you. Oh, no, we lost all the pictures. Uh, it may or may not be asbestos siding. So I would say it's in your best interest to plan another 10 to 15K into this to, to vinyl side encapsulate that, right? So you got the driveway, the porch, the vinyl siding. Now, here's the other thing about the city you got you to be aware of. Uh, unlike a lot of places in the Cleveland market, when you have these 100-year-old houses, they have these little lean-to garages, and they get dilapidated, and you tear them down, and that's that's it. No big deal. Uh, this one, if that happens, they'll make you replace the garage. However, on this particular POS inspection report, they said that there's no room for a garage, so they're not going to make you. But when you're dealing with a little city like this where they're kind of making their own rules, you have to wonder if eventually they're going to make you redo that, right? Maybe they'll go back on their word. They make shit up as they go, honestly. Uh, I mean, come on. They're, dude, their mayor. Their mayor literally works part-time as a librarian in, like, Medina, okay? It's... It's a whole fucking mess. Steve, put that on the screen, too. <laughs> Get that on the screen. This fucking guy. Uh, I've gone back and forth with this guy a few times. He's a fucking idiot. But uh, 
Anywho, he's he's in my opinion a crook. But um doesn't necessarily mean you still can't make some money here, right? But you just have to know what you're getting into, right? The educated investor can make some money, right? So the deal seems like it's a screamer, but this is all the stuff you're taking on, right? Right now, they're saying you don't have to do a garage. But if they change their mind later and they're not an ex into Cleveland and they're still running things however they want, right, that's another 20000 out of your pocket when you become the seller one day. So all of those are reasons why this particular seller is not able to get what he should be getting, which is two hundred k for his property. So with all that said, I believe we could probably pick this up for a song. If you're willing to take on all that stuff, uh, 129, we don't have to pay that, I don't believe. I believe we can pick this up for 115. Then we're going to need to put 50 into it, right? Uh, the um, driveway that they're making us do, right? The porch, okay? And then I, they're not making us, but I think uh, covering up that asbestos siding is a good thing, right? So you're going to spend about 50 uh, doing those three things and then just tearing through the other 80 pages of just ticky-tack stuff, this or that. Like there's even like a line item in there that said uh, – like, the tenant's cleaning supplies are messy. You should reorganize the shelf. Like, some fucking crazy bullshit like that, right? So, uh, all told, we probably get everything ready for about 50 k And then, doing that, theoretically, you have a $200,000 property because it's going to be POS clear, and the next buyer, the bank, or anybody wouldn't have to factor in all the insane point-of-sale regulations that these folks are just putting out there. So, you should have a $200,000 property, right? So, if you're getting the market rent, like I talked about earlier, that's going to bring home an average NOI every year of a little bit over 17 grand, right? And here's what's so great about burger deals, right? If you're all in for 165, the 115 purchase price plus the 50 to clear the crazy POS stuff, you're all in for 165, we get it to appraise at 200. That means the bank will give you back 150, meaning you're only $15,000 into the deal, which would project out to a 65.2% cash on cash return, right? So you can see that this particular investment has the ability to generate a ton of money, but with anything in real estate, there's always a catch, right? It's how much BS are you willing to deal with uh, in an effort to get yourself a quad kicking off 65%. If you're able to deal with all the BS I just mentioned, this would be a killer deal. If uh, you don't want to deal with something like that. Maybe you want to wait till this gets annexed into Cleveland if that does happen. That's totally understandable as well. That's what I do, right? That's what I do here. I show you guys what's going on, and I give you a no BS transparent look. I don't think there's anybody out there selling real estate that's going to break something like this down with the type of insight I just gave you. I think most other realtors would be like, Duh! They're selling for 200 This is what dirty. We're going to buy it, right? There's usually a catch when things appear to be uh, too good to be true. And here, I've explained it to you, but you can still make some money if you want to deal with it. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.